To save the boy, the mother had to be removed. Surgeon James Betts. The decision was made at that time to actually remove as much of her as we could, knowing that we couldn't totally extricate her. The other surgeon and I decided that the best way to do this would be to literally divide her body, and that's what we did. The boy was still trapped, and doctors were forced to amputate part of his leg. And I literally had to lie on my stomach um, on the corner of the back seat of this car um, to reach down inside to get to his leg. I think deep in my heart, I felt that if it were my child or, or the family would be able to be there, that they would agree with any decision possible to go ahead and save the life of this boy. As several agencies converged on the structure, it became obvious that heavy construction equipment would be the only means of accessing the trapped bodies. Once the location of all of the vehicles was established, special cement cutting tractors were used to open large holes over the crushed vehicles. This allowed for access to the trapped victims, some of whom had been in vehicles that were now compressed to 12 inch high slabs. Others were badly disfigured or burned beyond recognition. This made the coroner's identification process and the California Highway Patrol's vehicle identification process very difficult. It took a total of 10 days to recover all of the 41 bodies. Four days after the earthquake, a Caltrans engineer investigating a dark, unstable section of the Cypress observed movement in a crushed car. An immediate rescue effort ensued. 57-year-old male by the name of Buck, B-U-C-K, first name, last name Helm, H-E-L-M-S. He was just um, extricated and removed uh, from a location around 28th Street. Buck Helm is at Highland Hospital in Oakland. The news there is... Because the uncollapsed portion of the 32-year-old viaduct was severely damaged, a decision was made to immediately begin demolition. Dismantling of 80,000 tons of concrete and steel rubble continued until early 1990. Once removed, the surface roadway known as Cypress Street was repaired and reopened. Construction on the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge began in July of 1933. On November 12, 1936, the five and a half mile long span opened for traffic. The Bay Bridge is the world's largest span and is the only bridge to incorporate four major types of bridge construction. The bridge carries 250,000 vehicles a day, the third largest traffic volume in the United States. At the collapse site, a steel tower supports the roadways 200 feet above the San Francisco Bay. When the earthquake struck, a force of two million pounds sheared 40 one-inch thick bolts. These bolts were all that secured the entire eastern portion of the bridge to the tower. As the roadways began to move, the upper and lower decks were pulled off their supports and collapsed. The blue vehicle was nearly stopped when it rode the top deck downward. 
The van was struck by the falling upper deck and was catapulted off the collapsed lower deck. The red car slowed and barely nosed over into the open gap. Construction crews worked 24 hours a day for 30 days to complete the repairs needed to reopen the bridge. They removed the damaged 160-ton roadways, then realigned the 3,000 feet of bridge from the tower to Oakland. And finally, the roadways were paved and the bridge reopened November 17, 1989. The Cypress Structure Viaduct was California's first double-deck freeway. One and a half miles long, it opened in June of 1957 at a cost of $9 million. Normally, there would be approximately 200 vehicles on both levels of the three-quarter mile section that collapsed. However, there were only 107 vehicles caught on the upper and lower decks of the structure when it fell. At the time of the structure's collapse, most vehicles had slowed from 59 miles per hour to an average speed of approximately 38 miles per hour on the southbound upper deck, and from 57 miles per hour to approximately 32 miles per hour on the northbound lower deck. The majority of the 58 vehicles on the lower deck were crushed by the falling upper deck or drove into the collapsed cement and steel support beams. Of the 49 upper deck vehicles, some were slammed into the roadway surface. Others were catapulted over raised sections of exposed freeway or collided with other vehicles. Six vehicles were launched from the upper deck and fell to the surface streets below. Those vehicles not stopped by the collapsed structure bounced, rolled, or slid for as many as 14 seconds before coming to a stop. The California Highway Patrol's analysis of vehicle motion indicates that the Cypress structure began collapsing at four separate sites, four seconds after the structural motion was perceived by people driving on the viaduct. The progressive failure radiated north and southward from each of these sites. Approximately two seconds later, the entire structure had collapsed. This is only a summary of the California Highway Patrol's response and findings concerning the October 17, 1989 seismic shaking of the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge and the Cypress Street Viaduct, two of the effects of the Loma Prieta earthquake. 50-foot bridge collapse from westbound into eastbound, east of TI.